Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Jamel from Fantasy Life and today I want to talk about Street Fighter V and its DLC content. With Street Fighter V coming out in 3 months and free DLC already being teased, I decided to look into this matter. Capcom has been more than excited to announce free DLC for their upcoming Street Fighter V game. Capcom has stated that the DLC will not be on the disc, which means that it will not be something that's already in the game and just blocked off by a paywall, but instead will be actual content that will be downloaded to the disc. This is great news. It will be similar to Super Street Fighter 4 where uh, any new DLC or patches that needed to be done, Capcom was able to send uh, via download to correct any issues. This will prevent people from having to go out and buy a new, newer version of the same game. Kind of what happened with Marvel vs. Capcom and, and Street Fighter 4 Vanilla. Uh, all of the content was on the disc, so Capcom wasn't able to further support the game after they had released it. Thus requiring people to upgrade to the Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom in a Super Street Fighter 4 edition. So that uh, they can continue providing services to these uh, consumers. This time Capcom will be doing it out of the gate, which is a good thing. Now, back to the free DLC. Capcom also announced that throughout 2016, they will be supporting the game via patches, as well as releasing um, up to six new characters by the end of the year. This is also a very good move by Capcom, as this will keep uh, players interested in Street Fighter V throughout the year. If Capcom releases a a new character every couple weeks or every few months. Uh, what makes this DLC free is as players play Street Fighter 5 they will earn currency called fight money. Once you've accumulated a certain amount of uh, fight money you can go in and purchase the new characters and probably new outfits and colors for, for your favorite characters. Uh, that last part I'm not 100% sure of. Um, if anybody knows please uh, uh, comment on the um, comment section to uh, to inform me please. In my research I was not able to find any uh, sort of uh, announcement for any season pass. Uh, so as far as I'm aware Capcom is not doing a season pass for Street Fighter V that will be uh, in conjunction with this new free DLC that we're going to be getting. This lack of a season pass raised the question if Capcom is going to be supporting this game for the next year and offer free DLC how will Capcom make money? How will Capcom maximize profits? We as players have to understand that at the end of the day, Capcom is a business. And one of the best ways for game developers to increase revenue and maximize profit is through season pass, paid DLC, and microtransactions. In my research, I've discovered how Capcom intends to make incremental profits from Street Fighter V. And I have to say, if implementing, if implemented right and, and fairly, I will be okay with it. I do have to point out that this is uh, not a new method. Um, there has other, there has been other games that implemented this particular strategy, such as Mortal Kombat X, Advanced Warfare, and even the new Halo 5, uh, to name a few. What I discovered was the free DLC Capcom is pushing so vigorously can also be purchased with real cash. And I would link the articles um, from the reputable sources in the description below. I'm actually okay with this method because it gives people the option to choose. I can either choose to grind out and earn the money required to purchase this new, these new DLC characters, um, which will make my efforts just that much more rewarding, or I could just come out of pocket and, and pay for these characters. Some people will ask though, if I can earn these characters, why would I ever pay for these characters? And this is what makes this strategy so smart. This option to pay for the new DLC characters is not geared towards the hardcore gamers. It is actually directed towards the occasional and casual gamers. This is where Capcom has the option to screw people over though. Whether the occasional or casual gamer decides to grind out and earn everything or just pay out of pocket for it depends on the difficulty and time required to achieve it. The casual gamer often works full time and have a family or, or work in multiple jobs and just doesn't have the time to dedicate 40-50 hours to unlock everything within a particular video game. 
these casual gamers, the logical option is often to pay for these uh, DLC content, especially due to the fact that a lot of the times these DLC content are provided at a very desirable price. Now, this can be a double-edged sword for Capcom. If Capcom makes the grind to earn fight money too difficult or too time consuming, this would be criticized for marketing a free DLC that is not attainable for most gamers. But if Capcom makes the grind for fight money too easy or too short, then they'll actually lose money as most people would just opt to grind out and, and earn the fight money as opposed to just spending the extra cash. And this is not good for business. Now, another thing Capcom needs to take into account is the actual cost of the DLC characters. They have to make them cheap enough to be desirable for the casual gamer to make the purchase, but expensive enough for them to actually turn a profit. Okay, that's the end of this video. If uh, I left out any information that anybody wants to bring up, please uh, comment in the comment section below. This is Jamel from Fantasy Life reminding you, your life is a fantasy.